Well, mine's a little dark. I just feel a lot of concern that 2024 may be the year of a black swan event. This is a national security event with high impact that's very hard to predict. Powerful people in the world, you know, they see themselves as utterly incapable of actually creating a future in which everything's gonna be okay. A colossal compound on the island of Kauai, complete with a massive doomsday bunker. What is it with billionaires and their doomsday bunkers? But I mean, the question is, what do they know that we don't know? They're prepping for some kind of large scale disaster. I'm a bit worried about it to be honest. Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Meta, has started to prepare for the doomsday. Is there something that Mark Zuckerberg seems to know that we don't? How many have seen The Last of Us in the zombie apocalypse? <laughs> World's richest people are all buying islands, purchasing huge tracts of lands in places like Hawaii and New Zealand, and having vast, sprawling compounds constructed in near secrecy, forcing the builders to sign unprecedented NDAs to keep all the details hidden, and fitting them with blast-proof underground bunkers, all so they can survive a future scenario that they call... The event. The event. What event? Whatever it is, I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. Right. Well, it's between 600 and 750 days since the event, but that hasn't stopped those of us that survive from enjoying ourselves. Mark Zuckerberg's very worried about it. So worried he spent the last 10 years having a 1,400-acre compound built in Hawaii at a cost of over $270 million, making it one of the most expensive properties in human history, which includes at its heart a 5,000-square-foot underground shelter. And according to locals, there's even talk of Zuck building a vast underground city. The reason? The event. The event. A post-apocalyptic bunker in case of civilization collapse. Okay, then that's normal, isn't it? Hawaii is obviously an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. If there is something that really goes south, how long can you last without supplies? Zuck and his people won't even need to leave the compound to get supplies because it's completely self-sufficient. The property has its own giant water tank and a wide variety of food being grown on site. The construction workers call it Fight Club because if they utter a word about it, they're immediately kicked off the project. And it's being constructed behind a shroud of secrecy usually only seen with secure military installations. And there was no public review process despite the complaints of irate residents. Yeah, the man who built an empire off of sharing your private info is very keen to keep a lid on what he's up to. This six foot tall rock wall along Ko'olau Road in Pila'a has been jokingly compared to the wall Donald Trump wants between the US and Mexico. The wall protects billionaire Mark Zuckerberg's 700-acre estate. Not only does the Facebook founder's personal Xanadu boast blast-resistant doors, the door in the underground shelter will be constructed out of metal and filled in with concrete, a style common in bunkers and bomb shelters, just in case Zuck and his family need to quickly vacate the two mansions built directly above it in a hurry. The event. The plans show that the two central mansions will be joined by a tunnel that branches off into a 5,000 square foot underground shelter, featuring living space, a mechanical room, and an escape patch that can be accessed via a ladder. When you have that much money, when you're a billionaire, you either go up, you either go up to space, you go find somewhere else to live, or you go down. There are guard towers and cameras everywhere. Eyewitnesses have reported weird loud noises that sound like gunshots emanating from the site. Suffice to say, whatever Zuck is preparing his family for, it hardly looks like it's going to be something that blows over in a matter of weeks or months. And they want to live forever. And none of us are going to live forever. Yeah. And if you've got too much money, then you can go build a five square. put in a cryogenics. And, yeah, yeah, that, exactly. you, they name probably it. already got that. Right. Mark Zuckerberg is by no means the only ultra-wealthy elitist busy preparing for the event. The event. There are reportedly over a dozen billionaires that we know of who have been building advanced survival compounds across the globe with completion dates of winter 2024. After the Hawaii wildfires evicted many ordinary people from their homes, the high net net worth elite are still moving in. Melaleuca billionaire Frank van der Sloot recently dropped $51 million on 2,000 acres of ranch land. The Hawaiian island of Lanai is now almost completely owned by Oracle billionaire Larry Ellison. And there's now an entire economy created in Hawaii, based solely around the creation of a new surf class to service the mega rich's needs. In Florida, Jeff Bezos spent $147 million buying two mansions on Indian Creek Island, while OpenAI CEO Sam 
Sam Altman and venture capitalist Peter Thiel have their own little arrangement, where the pair will take a jet to one of Thiel's New Zealand properties in the case of an apocalyptic event. The event. Thiel has been fighting local government for the past two years, trying to build his own ten-bedroom compound directly into the landscape. A doomsday bunker with the bonus of having one of the best views in the world as the rest of the globe burns. Wired reports that the whole country is now riddled with bunkers reserved for the tech elite. While Google co-founder Larry Page has also been quietly acquiring islands across the world. He now owns at least four that we know of, three in the Caribbean and one in Fiji, all staffed with his own exclusive team of workers and servants, all located in areas that are virtually inaccessible to the general public. The Bidens are apparently hunkering down too, surrounding their Delaware property with a top secret wall. According to writer Douglas Rushkoff, who met with a group of these billionaires for his book Survival of the Richest, they're completely obsessed with finding out how to quote, best configure their bunkers to survive the end times. The billionaires, they understand that they're playing a dangerous game, that they are running out of room to externalize the damage of the way their companies operate. Eventually, there's going to be, you know, the social unrest that leads to your undoing, which is why these same people are looking at creating bomb shelters. All in preparation for the event. The event. An event that's going to hit you in the face like a ton of bricks while they all scuttle off to their luxury underground bunkers. And what will trigger the event? Only they really know. We face a potential cultural collapse, the largest regional war in generations. A precarious stock market completely dependent on the big tech seven. A potential total economic collapse in China. An America that's the most divided it's been since the civil war. A serious crisis that could lead to the postponement of the the election. Could this be the black swan event? The year of a black swan event. And if and when the election does go ahead, monumental resentment and anger whoever wins followed by massive civil disorder. Whatever the event is, the richest people in the world appear to firmly believe that it's right around the corner. With billionaires scrambling to build survival bunkers and economic forecasters predicting a turbulent 2024, there's so much uncertainty surrounding the fabric of society and the financial outlook look for the coming year. It's never been more important to protect your assets and be hyper vigilant of immediate future trends. But what we can be emphatically more assured about is Alaska Energy Metals, which I'm delighted to introduce as the sponsor of today's video. I'm specifically talking about the Nikolai Project, a nickel and battery metal project with a multi-million pound nickel potential. The project holds promising prospects as a large, reliable, domestic source of nickel for the ongoing energy transition. Based on historical drilling, there are strong indications of a significant nickel deposit, along with other valuable metals. And of course, that's crucial because nickel is a key component of rechargeable batteries. The world's growing appetite for electric vehicles is driving a frankly staggering demand for raw materials for batteries. Nickel, primarily used in stainless steel, is also a key component used in cell phones and power tools. Elon Musk has been desperately trying to warn about nickel shortages for years, urging companies to boost production. Any companies out there, please mine more nickel. Tesla will give you a giant contract. And when the world's richest person sounds an alarm about the precarious state of our collective financial future, you sit up and listen. Tesla is even trying to open its own nickel production facilities, with Musk asserting nickel is our biggest concern for scaling lithium iron cell production. But while CNBC reports that there's enough nickel in the ground to support a major EV ramp up, they lament the fact that there just aren't enough nickel mining projects or processing facilities to currently meet runaway demand. According to the Raw Materials Information System, when compared to 2020, nickel, graphite and lithium demand is projected to increase in 2040 by 2019 and 14 times respectively. That's a monumental supply chain challenge. Brazilian company Vale predicts a 44% increase in global nickel demand alone by 2030. Crux Investor reports that Roskill puts the figure even higher, forecasting a nickel demand growth of over 150% by 2035. They say over 4 million tonnes of new nickel supply will be required in that time frame. It's crucial for America to establish a stable domestic supply of nickel to both meet 
meet demand and not become even more dependent on China and other foreign countries. The US is currently so dependent on China for nickel, some would call it a national security threat. Nikkei.com reports that US imports of lithium iron batteries from China more than doubled in 2022 to over $9 billion worth. This amounted to 12.5% of all US imports of lithium iron batteries, five times as much as in 2018. In 2021, around 80% of nickel, graphite, and other key minerals used in EVs in the United States came from China. This kind of dependency can only be bad news for American self-reliance and future prosperity. What happens if the US gets embroiled in a conflict with China over Taiwan? and Beijing just bans exports. The United States is crying out for its own domestic nickel supply source. And that's what makes AEMC increasingly attractive. It's going to take some time to get there, but with more drilling, Nikolai could be a multi-billion pound nickel asset. The geological facts here show it could be possible to be larger than Canada's Nichols Crawford deposit, which just received a $34.7 million investment from mining titan Agnico Eagle and trades at $1.40, and the other existing known US nickel deposits. The early stage nickel stock is up 30% in the last year and has a lot more room for potential gains, with the world facing an unprecedented clamour for battery materials. Alaska Energy Metals is primed to be the next American success story, which is why I urge you to check out AEMC via the link down below. <laughs> If you value what I do and you want to help support me, please visit pauljosephwatson.locals.com and either pledge a one-time donation or subscribe to join my community, get early access videos and message me directly. And exclusive live streams coming soon too. Promise. Check out the Locals link down in the description. And don't forget to take a look at the brand new website, modernity.news. That's where you'll find all my content, including exclusive articles. That's modernity.news. <laughs>